Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, I've discussed before, in fact, made a whole episode about our adventures at Reckoning Lop. And as it's coming up again, we started to prepare. By the way, Reckoning tickets are on sale, so if you want to LARP with us, link in the description below. Anyways, at said LARP, Maddie and I decided we wanted to try our hand at running our own little shop. But that shop is basically one small part to fund the Solar Exchange, the guild that she's running. And we thought it would be really cool to have like a banner for the Solar Exchange, like some kind of cool pennant flag or something. She even came up with this dope design right here about how it should look. The issue is to have something like a full ass banner actually made is actually quite expensive. But that's when I remembered, it's what we do here. We make stuff. Sure, to varying degrees of quality, but damn it, we gotta at least try. So that's today's episode. Today we're gonna try to brush up on our sewing skills and make some kind of epic banner. So without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. Okay, so first things first, I figure just kind of flying by the seat of my pants with this wouldn't be a good idea, so I wanted to make some kind of paper template. Now, I didn't have paper large enough to make that template out of, so I just grabbed this large book of newsprint that I had laying around, as the paper's cheap and the biggest I have. To give myself the size I needed, I just went ahead and added some masking tape to combine a few pieces together. I wanted this banner to be able to be seen from a distance, right? So I didn't want it to be small. I wanted it to be something actually quite large. So I decided around four foot by two feet would be a good way to start. So I went back in and trimmed my paper to around these dimensions. Then I folded everything in half to give me a nice center line to work with. This is gonna help me to make sure that this thing is symmetrical. Basically, all I have to do is draw my shape on one half of that so that when I cut it out and unfold it, no matter how wonky my lines were, they're gonna be exactly the same on the other side. So to start with the kind of shield design we're going for, I first put my straight edge in an angle that I thought looked pretty gradual. Then close to the bottom where I thought the taper should start, I just kind of freehanded this lazy arc from my line to the point. You could totally use some kind of round object or a compass to do this. I just found it really easy. If you kind of place your elbow stationary, you can use your arm as a compass and get a pretty good freehand arc. Once that basic design was drawn in, I went back in with an X-Acto blade just to free up my design and remove all the excess material. This leaves me with this really nice shield pendant kind of shape. Okay, so next I want to put the entirety of this design, like everything in the middle, within that shape so I can kind of see how it would all lay out. And I figured the best place to start is actually the centerpiece, that circle with the sun in it. Just because everything else kind of flows from that one point. To make that circle, I just went ahead and measured out some leather cordage. Then on that cordage, I put a mark at one end, then measured out six inches from that mark and put another mark. On that first mark, I punched this tack through to give me a little rotational point. At the other mark, I used an awl to make a hole just big enough to fit the tip of my mechanical pencil through. Then on the template, I measured four inches down from the top of my shield shape to mark where the very top of that circle would end up. That line from when I folded the paper in half helped me keep everything nice and centered. From that mark, I measured six inches down to mark where the very center of my circle would sit. By the way, a lot of times when I'm shutting out measurements, you might see that I'm like an inch bigger. So on that last clip, it looked like I was holding to seven inches instead of six inches. That's because I always hold at the one inch mark because most rulers have a little bit of slop built into the top here and I want it to be perfect. Just a little FYI in case you're confused with what you see. Anyways, now all I have to do is stick my pin into that center point I marked out and use my leather cordage as a compass to make a perfect circle one foot in diameter. This is a super easy trick to use to get whatever circle size you want without having to look for something circular that is that shape to use as like a template. For most of the rest of my design, I just relied on this French curve here. With it, I was really easily able to get a lot of those center designs that Maddie had put in the picture. Then for those larger sweeping arcs, I again just used that trick where I used my elbow as a pivot point. Now, as you can see, aside from the circle, I actually only drew in one side. It would be extremely difficult for me to kind of measure everything out and have all those lines end up perfectly symmetrical. Not impossible, but just way more work than I'm willing to put in. To help get those lines symmetrically on the other side though, I just busted out some of this carbon paper that I've had lying around from other projects. I always forget to use it, but for applications like this, it is so mint to have. All I have to do is fold my pattern in half and lay it on top of my carbon paper. Then I just trace over the design that I already drew. Doing this gives me a perfectly symmetrical pattern that only takes me a few minutes to do. Now, if you don't have carbon paper, you can just darken up your lines on that one side and then trace through what you can see on the other side. But seriously, carbon paper is really cheap and totally worth the money. 
For one last detail, I use my little leather cord compass here to make an inner circle one inch away from that outer circle that I drew earlier. Cool, so with that all figured out, we can go ahead and start taking it out of that paper pattern and adding it onto our fabric. Now for this project, I actually decided to use varying colors of duck cloth. Duck cloth is just like a thick canvas of a cloth that's really good, like weather resistant. It's used on outdoor stuff a lot. Um, it's very heavy duty. It's going to take a beating. Not only that, but they came in all of the colors that I needed, which is perfect. They're all like lined up. It was meant to be. So the thought here is to cut out each one of those different colors in that design out of the duck cloth and then just kind of layer them on top of each other how they would go. Starting with the largest, the background color, the white, which I just laid down and hit with my iron real quick to get out all of the wrinkles. FYI, I did pre-wash all of these to make sure they were pre-shrunk so they don't shrink on me later on. Now using my overall pattern, it was pretty easy to trace it out with a one inch gap all the way around. Then cut it out with my good scissors. Technically, they're my wife's good scissors, but shh, she doesn't remember, baby. Our secret. Leaving that extra inch all around allows me to fold those edges over and iron them down so that I have a nice, clean edge to work with. I just went ahead and pinned those edges in to keep them in place as I work. All of this gives me this slick little shield pattern flag here. So far, so good. But I'll be honest with you, I am just, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, so. Let's just see how we do. Now, I could have went ahead and taken that pattern and just like painstakingly measured out each different layer and how big it would be or whatever. But I just thought that would be a lot more work than I was willing to put in. So instead, I grabbed my scissors and just cut away all of the white layer, which I had already finished. That left me with this kind of grandfather clock shaped middle section to work with the next largest layers being this yellow egg shaped section and the blue fan down here at the bottom. So I just went ahead and did the same thing, ironing out my yellow duck cloth, laid my pattern down into place, then traced out the general shape with that one inch allowance, cut it out, and then folded and ironed the edges to keep it clean. And with those done, it was back to my pattern to cut away that section that I'd already finished, giving me access to the next section's lines. You can see how doing it this way, at least for me, made it really easy to just go layer by layer and get all the shapes that I needed. Like after cutting out and prepping that pretty light blue section, I was able to move on to the darker blue uppermost layers. And you can really see how once these bits are laid on top of each other, the flag starts to take shape. Super excited by how that was looking. Now, if you're somebody who does stuff like this professionally, I would love for you to leave down in the comment section if I'm doing this right or if there's a more efficient way to do it. I didn't look up any tutorials on this. I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. So I don't know if this is the best way to do it. Seems to be working. That being said, it does start to get really thick towards that top center area as you start to add more layers of fabric. Okay, so the final kind of top-ish layer that I had to work on was the actual white circle that the sun design was gonna sit in. To try to make this as circular as possible, I cut these little slits all along the edge within my one inch seam allowance. Doing this makes it so that I can iron in all those little fingers and get them to lay down a bit cleaner in the shape of a circle than it would have otherwise been able to if I just tried folding the fabric over on itself. At this point, the last thing to try to tackle before I put it all together was the most detailed portion, the sun. I could have totally like blown this up to size and just printed it. It might've taken two different sheets of paper that I taped together, but that would have been pretty easy. But I decided to draw it out just because it let me play with the design a little bit. And honestly, I like to just kind of sip whiskey and draw sometimes. Do what's fun for you. Speaking of. Now to transfer that image onto the fabric, I used the carbon paper again. This made it really easy, though it will leave like those lines marked out in carbon on your fabric. For me, it's not a big deal because I plan on following those lines as I put some stitching in, but if your design is gonna be just kind of there, maybe go a different route. I did cut this out with a small allowance around those edges, thinking I'd be able to fold them in like I did with the other pieces of fabric to make those edges look clean. But this was a mistake. Everything just started to kind of fray, and I think I didn't leave enough fabric to allow everything to stay like folded together and clean. All in all, it's a big fail. It just didn't work out. So it was off to plan B which was basically just rolling out some of this heat and bond paper and ironing my sun into place. This stuff is basically a layer of plastic that's backed in paper that melts with the heat of the iron. That melted plastic adheres to the back of the fabric and basically makes it like an iron-on patch. By adding the iron heat again, it'll remelt that plastic and it'll stick pieces of fabric together. And after cutting away all the excess material and paper, I'm left with this perfect little sun, just ready to be stuck wherever I want it. 
All right, now that we have all of our pieces cut out, it's time to actually put them all together. Firstly, I put everything where it would go so that I could make sure the positioning is exactly where I want it. Then I removed all the topmost layers, leaving just the bottom two layers, the white and the yellow, which I pinned together in place. So as you can see in the picture here, you can see that all the different colored areas are outlined in kind of a thick black line. This is all well and good when you're just drawing something, like that's how you do it, you outline it first in black. But to actually make that reality, I was so stuck. Like, do I cut a black piece of fabric that's a little bit bigger than those pieces to put behind them? Do I add like tiny piece of cordage and try to sew that into place? That seemed like a pain in the ass. Maybe like fabric markers? Oh man, I was so stuck for so long. But that's when I found this stuff. This is called bias tape maxi piping. It's basically a little rope wrapped in fabric with a flat bit that you can sew into. All I had to do was pin it in place all around my yellow section and then finally lock the whole thing together using my sewing machine. And this worked great, giving my yellow section this nice bold black outline, exactly what I was looking for. That was such a perfect eloquent little answer to my conundrum. Though it did take me hours of just wandering aimlessly around Joanne Fabrics. Seriously, so much time. But this was pretty much the drill going forward. I would just pin each new additional layer with that piping all along the edges, and then lock it in place with my sewing machine using a thread that was the same color as that topmost fabric. And this actually turned out really easy to do. And again, I was super impressed with how good that outline of piping made everything look. And that extra detail of making sure the thread was the same color of each layer really helped to make those sewing lines just kind of disappeared and make the whole thing look like one cohesive unit. And the sun was extra easy thanks to that heat and bond. All I did was peel off the paper backing and then iron it into place. Though I also wanted to sew it because I thought just the, the extra texture of seeing those stitch lines all along the outer edge of it would kind of look cool. Still, like I said before, at this point where the sun is, there's like six different layers of material. Way too much for my poor little Singer Simple sewing machine to have to go through. So instead, I just used my leather sewing machine, which made totally short work of this. Had no problems. I did an episode on this machine and I continue to get hell for that machine, but man, let me tell you what, it works perfectly. I love that thing. One of the best purchases I've ever made. I will die on this hill. That thing works great. Okay, last bit of detail here. If you can see in this drawing, there's a lot of these little swoopy lines that add texture and kind of make the whole thing look quilted. In order to get that same effect, I just use a straight edge for all of my straight lines and drop them in with a pencil. Then I kind of freehanded those more swoopy lines. These just gave me some guides I can use that I can go back into my sewing machine and actually put these permanently into place with some thread. And check it out! I'm actually really proud of how slick this thing looks. To put the finishing touch on the overall body of this piece, I just cut out a piece of that navy blue fabric so that it's an inch and a half bigger all the way around the shield. Then of course locked it into place with my sewing machine. I could have made that a little bit longer and then folded those edges in a couple of times before I sewed it to make sure everything was clean. But again, I wanted to have that black kind of border like I did before. To do that though, I had to use a bit of a different material. I ended up grabbing some of this bias tape with a double fold, which is basically like a small ribbon of fabric that's been folded over on itself a couple of times. I was able to actually sandwich the edge of my fabric within that fold and then sew the whole thing into place. This gave me a really clean edge and a nice black outline I was looking for. Finally, this thing being a flag, we need a way to like hang it up, right? I don't want to be nailing through the actual fabric. To accomplish this, I simply just cut out some strips of fabric that I then folded over on themselves and sewed up. By doing this, I was able to make these strong little straps here that'll easily hold up the weight of my flag once they're sewn on. And I just sewed these into place along the top of my banner with some of that yellow thread for a little bit of extra pop. Now I can easily just slide some sort of stick inside there and use that to mount this proudly for all to see. I love how good this thing came out. It looks so clean and honestly, it was really easy to do. Still, it felt a little flat to me. Like if you look at the picture here, look at it, look at it good. There's a lot of depth. Like she added a lot of shadow to that quilting and I, I really wanted some of that. Not only that, but I kind of wanted to make it look a little bit more epic and used. Like she crossed a waist with this thing, right? Needed to look like it, like she's earned this place. The answer to this was using my airbrush to add a little bit more detail, but I'm gonna be honest with you. It scares the crap out of me. 
It was hard work to get it to this point and I was so afraid because I'm not very experienced with, with an airbrush at all. I was desperately afraid, afraid I was gonna ruin this thing. Still, I rolled the dice here and took the risk. All I did was make a dark line wherever my stitches were and then try to feather that darkness out, lightening it up towards the middle. Basically just adding some extra depth and giving each one of those sections a nice rounded appearance. The hope here was to make each one of those sections seem like they're a little bit more deeper than they actually are and really drive home that kind of quilted vibe. While also adding kind of some grime to it and making it look really well worn. Then finally to protect this whole thing, I decided to add some of this Kiwi Camp Dry as a water repellent. This stuff works great for sealing up the fabric from moisture and just making everything easier to clean with a wet rag. And though I am not the best with an airbrush, I am stoked at how this thing came out. It almost looks like a video game prop. The shadows and the grime might be, to my taste, a little bit overdone, but I think it just adds some kind of moodiness to the whole thing and gives it some more like epic appeal. Fun story, I took a picture of it afterwards and I was I was at first really upset by it because I just, I couldn't control the gun enough and I thought it came out too dark and I was really kind of upset. And I sent it to Maddie, I'm like, what do you think of it? Expecting her to be like, ooh, what'd you do? And she's like, oh my God, I love it. Which was really great for me. Sometimes you need to walk away from a thing. I, since then, I've walked out of the room, I left it for a day, I came back, and I genuinely really, really like it. All that to say, when you're working on a project, it's really easy to get in your own head and be like nervous about the thing you're doing and automatically assume you messed something up. Give yourself some space to breathe and then reassess it afterwards. It probably isn't as bad as you thought it was. And again, now with a little bit of time, I'm genuinely very happy with how this thing came out. And it was a really easy build in general. If you want to make your own epic standard of some sort, it's not that hard to do. I highly recommend you try it. And let me know what you think, how this one came out down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. Now, I hope you like what you saw. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, if you're not participating yet, you should totally jump into our Level Up Lop competition. If you haven't heard of it, we've partnered with Bergschneider Hold a competition that'll ultimately send one of you with us to Germany to experience the largest LARP in the world, Conquest. For more details, you can check out this video here. The people who have been participating so far are freaking incredible. They're so creative and the stuff they're coming up with is just amazing. This is the second phase of the contest and there's more to come. I really hope you give it a shot. And if nothing else, Berg Snyder gives you like a 30% discount for taking part, so you get stuff for cheap. If you feel like jumping in and kind of just want to play with us, check out the link below. In the meantime, though, keep leveling up, you. You've made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It is honestly a really fantastic way to support this channel. Another great way to support this channel is by joining these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon, and honestly, they're the reason this show exists. If it wasn't for these incredible people, we would not be able to do this show and put together the different projects we're able to do here. I am eternally grateful to them for letting us play this way and just kind of live out this dream. If you'd like to support the channel like that, link in the description below. Otherwise, you can check out one of these here that YouTube thinks you'd like, and that's a great way to support the channel too. If it were me, I'd choose the one on the left. But the one on the right, it's not bad either.